So what is remote sensing? Well, the textbook definition from Lillis and Kiefer and Shipman is the science and art of obtaining information about an object, area or phenomenon without being in direct contact with the feature under investigation. But for all intents and purposes, the easier way to, to understand what remote sensing is is to actually break it down. So first of all, we have remote, which means at a distance from something, and sensing is to gain information about. This can be through a number of different means. So as examples up there on the screen, I've got, for example, an ultrasound of a, of a young child. Um, we've got the snickometer of, of a, uh, at a cricket match and also looking at the, the, the heat or the thermal imagery of the cricket player as well. We've got uh, a fish finder, so you're using information uh, with an echo sounder or sonar. And we also have a, a speed camera there as well. So they're all different forms of remote sensing. But for the purpose of this class, we're interested in environmental remote sensing and in particular looking at satellite images and aerial photos. So as an example, I'd like you to have a look at this image and have a think about where it is. You can pause the presentation at any stage if you'd like to not hear the answer while you think about it. But here I have a sequence of two images. So this is the first one here and the second image as it comes through. So these are just two different images in a time series that show completely different things. And what you're looking at here is after heavy rains in in February you know, during a wet season of one year we've got an increase in green vegetation of that second date and you can also see the flooded creeks and riverbeds as well. If you look closely you can see a slight grey line running up through the middle of the screen there and this is actually the Queensland Northern Territory border here. So this image shows a couple of things. First of all it shows you that you can get environmental information from satellite images but if you look at the next slide here, you'll also, also see how large an area this satellite image has, has acquired data over. So if you were to actually go out in the field and sample those areas, you would never be able to cover such a large area as this satellite image is, is taking image of instantaneously. So this is from the NASA Terra satellite and the, the the sensor on board the Terra satellite that's been used to capture this, these imagery is the MODIS sensor. We'll have a look at MODIS quite a bit throughout the semester. MODIS comes over twice a day and so there's a lot of information that you can acquire from such a sensor. So have a look at this series of images here. We've got the first one and in the time series we look at the second image here as well and you can see that there's quite a bit of difference there as well. And what you're looking at, again, we're using the motor sensor to cover a really large area. But this is the devastation in Burma or Myanmar after Cyclone Nargis in 2008. Now, the interesting thing here that remote sensing is showing is not only is it giving you the large area coverage that you, again, wouldn't be able to go out in the field and do yourself, but it's also giving you information on areas that would be either hard to access or quite dangerous to go to as well. So that's another benefit of using remote sensing in this case. Again, I have a series of images. So let's have a look at the first image here and look carefully at it as I change to the second image. And so maybe perhaps flick back and forwards between the two images to see the differences that you can that you can pick up. And I'll point some of them out. So if you had a look in the first image, you would have seen a couple of bridges that that have been broken in the second image. And also in the first image, there was a lot of vegetation that, that you now see as as brown. So these are large landslides that have also caused damming in this river that's passing through here. So you can see where the, where the river has been blocked up, but also a large amount of sedimentation in the river. This is a higher spatial resolution image than the previous ones that I've shown. So you see individual roads, bridges, and much more detail in the vegetation as well. But this is looking at a sequence of imagery in China, and this is following that large earthquake that occurred also in 2008. This series of images shows something a little bit different about remote sensing. What I'd like to show here is, if anyone's familiar with the area around British Columbia and Canada, we've got the we've got the Canada and United States um, borderline just showing just through here. And again, we're looking also at a MODIS image. And if you look at this image, you should be able to pick up these large areas of white. 
and you might think okay well it's, it looks like it's a winter scene I can probably see some snow but the next image here that I see actually picks up some of those areas some are now appear some of the areas that were previously white are now red and some are sort of a peachy whitey color so this shows how remote sensing can be used and different wavelengths are used to monitor different aspects on the ground. So the original image you couldn't tell the difference between ice, snow, fog, cloud, whereas this second image using infrared radiation starts to break apart those different things because all those different features reflect and absorb light in different ways. So you start to see that the peachy coloured patches in this image here are fog and cloud whereas the red is now snow and ice and you can tell the difference between those two. The other sorts of things that we can use remote sensing for is looking at weather forecasting that you'll see on the evening news each day. Looking at sea surface temperature and how this relates to coral bleaching for example and in this particular image off the east coast of Australia you can see the way currents are forming straight down the east coast of Australia. We also look at ocean colour to look at productivity in the oceans, phytoplankton, eutrophication, that sort of thing, and the amount of vegetation across different continents. Here's an example where we look at using remote sensing for monitoring the amount of coral on a reef. And again, if you look at the right hand side, those coloured dots there are individual field sites. And to acquire the amount of data required to understand the amount of coral there, that's a good week's worth of field survey. Whereas on the left hand side you can cover that entire area in an image and the image is instantaneous. This image shows a dust storm across, across southwest Queensland. Again, we've got some information on vegetation monitoring and this can be used for looking at illegal land clearance, but also there's large projects that, are, that involve looking at carbon accounting and how that relates to vegetation clearance and regrowth. Digital elevation and bathymetry models are both created from different forms of remote sensing. And also this, this gives an example of how we can monitor volcanic eruptions and in particular estimate the amount of volcanic gases and ashes in the in the atmosphere. It's particularly important for the aviation industry as they can't fly through volcanic ash. Another example for volcanic eruptions, if you look at the first image on the left, um, you'll, see, you'll see an island which is coloured in red that will go through the reasons for that in later lectures. But the red area is where there is dense vegetation and that image was taken in November 2006. The second image in the sequence there from March 2009 shows post-eruption where a large part of the island has now been formed. This, this was submarine prior to the eruption. You can also see a new crater lake there as well. And you can see the guys taking photos of the, of the eruption on a boat that's perhaps a little bit too close. We can also use remote sensing for monitoring temperature of volcanic lakes and giving an indication of perhaps when uh, an eruption is, is perhaps likely to occur. So this is using satellite thermal data or temperature data. And we can also use it to look at mapping and monitoring not just, not just uh, atmospheric emissions from volcanoes but also um, lava and lahar flows for example. So this is a mud flow from the top of Mount Ruapehu in central New Zealand and this is a major hazard really because this is the, the largest ski resort in New Zealand as well. Interestingly enough we can also use remote sensing for monitoring deformations due to either earthquakes, um, groundwater extraction or also volcanic activity. This is an example from the the uh, southwestern corner of the South Island of New Zealand and looking at how the island has actually deformed on a millimetre to centimetre scale post-earthquake. We can use remote sensing to extract information about geology and minerals which is really important for the mining industry and also for counting large numbers of landslides. So. This is also really important in difficult to access areas, either 
the, the vegetation makes it difficult to access or it's actually dangerous. In this area that I've highlighted here in the black box, if we have a look at a zoomed in area, so this is in northern New South Wales, and we, sorry, northern New Zealand, and if you have a look at that small area there with all the small yellow patches on the ground there, there was just over 1,700 landslides that were identified in this 10 by 10k scene. And again, going out and surveying these in the field would be near impossible, but you know it's a couple of days' work analysing this with remote sensing. So other types of applications that remote sensing is used in, it's used a lot in national security and intelligence. Uh, looking at land cover, land use, infrastructure mapping, oil and gas industry, telecommunications, various online mapping, so Google Earth, Google Maps, all that sort of thing is based on remote sensing data, personal navigation systems, construction survey, agriculture, forestry, water resources, insurance, disaster relief, and of course environmental monitoring.